All right, now the cutting compound that you'll see me use um, other than flood coolant if I need it, and I don't often need it, I'll talk about that sometime later, is a compound um, made with beeswax. And uh, it's not, uh, I'll tell you how this evolved. Um, years ago, this was real common, and I don't know if you can get it anymore, and I don't think you can even read it. I've had this since the 70s, and it's Johnson's Cutting Wax. You know, like Johnson's Floor Wax, they made this cutting wax. And it's likely, uh, they use, the, it's paraffin wax, it's got ingredients in it. See, it's pretty soft. Yeah, I'll put a little over here. Well, that worked pretty good, but it, it, it kind of fell from uh, favor. But some old timers kind of took it a step further. Huh, got a little bit in there. Um, and started using beeswax. Uh, beeswax uh, is even older, uh, way back uh, metalworking uh, substance. But the thing about wax is you can use it as a carrier to carry various uh, cutting fluids to the cut. And you know, the old timers, I haven't done any experiments or stuff, but everybody swears that the beeswax is the best. And it, tend, it, it has a, fl a higher uh, flash point, which means temperature until it bursts into flames, than uh, the paraffin wax. And it's, uh, beeswax is a natural thing. Uh, it's hard for big corporations to make a profit on it. You see that angle too? So what I've done here is I've taken uh, pure beeswax and melted it. And it's dark like this, and I can't find a bottle. It's uh, added uh, Castrol Molly D. Um, cutting fluid, which is a uh, molly dye, whatever it is. And uh, I, you can still get that, it's not, not real cheap. And that's the problem, right? The cutting fluids like that, I don't know, probably a bottle like that, it costs you 20 bucks a cast from molly D. But if you take and um, melt it in the beeswax, and you can also use like a thread cutting oil to thin it, and uh, I got to keep stirring it so it, nothing separates here. I just heated it up. And uh, so I'll keep stirring it. And, and then, you know, you can add cu other cutting fluids too. And there's another cutting fluid that I'm adding to this. And it was discontinued long time ago. And I got one can left and I put just a little bit in here and it extends that. You can extend your expense on cutting fluid and make a much easier to clean up uh, situation after uh, using this. Yeah, I gotta keep stirring here. But uh, I just thought I would uh, give you a visual of just what this is. And I'll, I'll show you here. Let, hold on. See, I melted it. And I'm going to thin it down just slightly and add another squirt of this and that. But I stuck a magnet in there, and I got the chips that end up in there. See? <laughs> But uh, a little tuna fish can of this goes a very long ways. And you know, this, uh, I really like the way this works. And uh, it's really good for those finishing cuts, you know. They, I got this from a jig board uh, person that, uh, that taught me how to use the jig boring machine. The, um, Pretty much, you know, with this uh, mixture like this with the Molly D, because there's no, uh, 
There's no flood coolant on a, on a jig boring machine. So th this is a very good thing to, uh, to use for that. Yeah. Yeah, see, that stuff can kind of separate. I don't know if you can see the moly disulfide in there kind of swirling around from the uh, moly D. And I find uh, this mixture I'm using here with uh, the Castro Molly D works on aluminum or steel, just about anything. It's, it's just quite versatile. And I just thought I'd point that out. I'm not telling you you should do that. I just told you why I do this, you know. And, and, and like I say, it's less than a, uh, of a mess than squirting stuff all over the place that ends up uh, in the tray of the lake. Just one of those things. Looking good here. Okay, I'll make this just like a super short video and uh, I'll be back here. I just happened to be doing this. I was uh, taking a coffee break here and I decided to melt this stuff and uh, remix it, add to it. And you can see it's starting to set up. <laughs> Looking pretty good there. I was gonna tell you a jig bore story. <clears throat> Now, you know, I was in the uh, motorcycle business, and I, I didn't just work on Harley Davidson's. I did work for uh, other motorcycle shops, more so than individuals. Because, you know, I, I'm talking business here. If, if, if you're a one guy band, one man band, you can't do it all. And I found you really can't deal with the customers. You can't deal with the everything. When you got to clean the toilet, you got to hold the shop, you got to pay all the bills, you got to do all this stuff. So it was better for me to target for customers, other businesses that needed machine work. And that was uh, <clears throat> all the motorcycle shops and um, the equipment dealerships. And uh, oh, any anything connected like that, and you can just build. Uh, back then, I don't know now what you can do. <laughs> but anyway, I was doing this uh, work on um, Harley Davidsons, and a lot of people really like Harley Davidsons. And this old guy comes in, and he's watching me repair uh, an engine case on, you no, know, probably a. A shovel head or a pan head or something and he goes you know uh, bad thing well bad things happen to motorcycle engines you know they spend bearings they they can blow up and break stuff out you know so I, I'd hook up with the uh, we have really good welders in this area because of the Hanford nuclear uh, thing over here. You, you have to have the best welders there are for nuclear work. And the, they're around here, so I kind of got spoiled. Um, and, and some welders are better at welding uh, old castings and stuff like that. Well, anyway, uh, I get these cases and stuff and uh, get them welded up if they're broken. And then I get them back on the machine and have to re relocate holes like for the cam and stuff like that. Well, this old guy comes in. I was using a bridge board. This old guy comes in. He goes, you know, there's a lot better machine than that. And uh, I says, well, well, what would that be? And he says, well, a jig bore. And I go, yeah, those are high accuracy and stuff like that. And I go kind of hard to come by. He goes, oh, no, 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 there's one over here at Church Washington Machinery. As a matter of fact, he's got two. So that's how that happened. So this old guy got me onto the jig boards. I, I ended up paying him <laughs> to teach me how to use it. And um, his background is aerospace. Uh, military and aerospace, and he did a lot of work uh, uh, down there in Los Angeles uh, for those big companies there. Real character, very, very talented guy. He's still alive, but he's just not in good shape, you know? He's likely in his 90s. Yeah, look, see that stuff uh, thicken up. But, uh, you know, uh, he, people like that just know so much and uh, it's lost.
you know. I only got bits and pieces of, uh, I guess, the golden age of machine work and uh, managed to put them, uh, a lot of these things to work in my own deal, you know. Yeah, see that stuff's starting to thicken up pretty good. Yeah, this is the stuff uh, that works pretty good for me. You know, I don't want to corrupt youth. You know, I just can't believe people think that way. I, I really can't. I corrupt little dogs. Chloe, knock it off. Okay. Hey, 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 come here. Oh, I'm gonna have to go get her. She's gonna, you know, get the police here. Okay, bye. <laughs>